I think some of you might be hearing this kind of music for the first time, but in a way, so are we. Because we play it a little bit different each time. There's not much to go on. This is passed down from an old European tradition that's over 100 years old called klezmer. And klezmer is present in places like Central Europe going pretty east into Russia. And if you think of uh, small settlements and small villages in Central Europe, especially the Jewish ones, uh, that's where this movement was developed. And I say a movement because it really is a culture within a culture. So there's going to be a dominant culture like the Hungarian language and the Hungarian music and within that small settlements of Jewish culture in which they speak Hungarian, they also speak the Jewish language Yiddish. They play the Hungarian music, they play the Yiddish music which is klezmer. And uh, similar to the gypsies where the gypsies were not the long time resident population of a certain country but the gypsies had to kind of wander, they weren't always welcome. From time to time that was true of the Jewish population as well and some of them ended up migrating to the New World. So what happened to Klezmer that kind of saved it at the point where it was really fading out was this migration to New York and it was uh, revived in New York between the World Wars probably, World War I, World War II and it really grew up with a, let's say a big bang in New York. Very little is left of the original Klezmer, it was a, not a verbal or a literary tradition. It was really by ear, except for little melodies. I have a, I picked up a book of klezmer melodies when I was traveling. You never know where you're gonna pick these up. This was in Tucson, Arizona. And I found this book and it had a bunch of little melodies in it and they're all klezmer melodies, some of which we use. And all you get is a, is a melody, a piece of music with the melody. And you have to figure out, well, who's available to play. The same was true in Europe where we call, it's like cooking from scratch. What, what ingredients do we have to make the food? And it would be the same with the music. All we have is a tune, but there's a fiddle player around. There may be a bass player or a cello player. Could be an accordion player or a piano player. All the same. Percussionist, clarinet, maybe, maybe a trumpet. Maybe somebody plays the tuba and so on. So there are all these um, kind of ragtag little orchestras, klezmer orchestras that this music is based on. So we want to share another little tune with you. In this case, this is kind of in the outskirts of that klezmer tradition. It has actually a Macedonian rhythm to it. Taking the basic beat of 4-4 four, four and making it into 7-8. So it's, it's what we call a shifting meter. I've talked about this in our music cultures class. So a shifting meter could be seven beats. Like 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, which is very, very square, you might say. This, this couldn't be less square. And uh, our singer, Rebecca, is here to sing the song. It has words and um, I believe it's in an ancient uh, Sp uh, Spanish Hebraic dialect called Ladino. Is that right, Rebecca? So this should be fun. It's called Umbo Keto.
querida, yo seré tu honor. Sí. Hey. Sometimes we shout, we get excited. It's kind of a, I have to say, ecstatic. It's a kind of an ecstatic music. As you play, we may only play a few tunes tonight, but uh, as you play, you get more warmed up and you want it to go on. If you could possibly play all night, you'd be gathering strength. You're kind of charging your batteries from the excitement of this music. So I, I wonder if some of you, some of you uh, Spanish speakers, understood some of that language. The name of the language of this is Ladino. And Ladino, if you go back, let's say, to 1492 or so, you would hear it spoken in the streets of Madrid. So before the Inquisition and before uh, Queen Isabella and Columbus, a little bit before, Arabic could be spoken, in, especially in southern Spain, uh, Ladino, of course Spanish. And then the gypsies had slowly started to filter in and their language was a combination of Spanish and Sanskrit because they had originally come from India at, a, at about the time of the millennium. And you don't have to take notes on that. That's, it's, it's a little bit of geography, a little bit of history, as well as the culture and the music. But the whole point is to enjoy the music. So we're going to go back to our, our little band now. Thank you for the lovely, lovely voice of, of uh, un boqueto. And does that mean a bouquet or something? Un boqueto? Yes. Uh, any other hint about what that song is saying? Sure, yeah. So she's saying, I gave you a bouquet and you gave it back to me. And so you should be careful because you're coveting another woman who's married. Leave her be, come to me, I will love you. <laughs> Amazing. And all, that all that in seven eight, and all that in seven eight, and that that rhythm is from Macedonia, which used to be it's it's the closest thing to Greece. It's called one of the Baltic, the Balkan countries, actually. Uh, so now we're going to play a piece called Sammy's Freyla. Now the word Freyla, the closest thing we have in English is the word frolic, and you'd kind of find that in let's let's say Elizabethan times. We don't always say we're frolicking. We're kind of happy, mm, I don't think so. It would be like the old word merry, the merry frolickers or something like that. And this is another merry piece. It might be played at a wedding. People are already really pumped up and excited and this would get them on, on through their feet and dancing, not real dancers. Again, this is the culture. This is sort of a spontaneous eruption of, of everyone. So this is Sammy's Freylock. I have to take a moment to get ready to play this huge instrument. I don't know if you've noticed, this left hand, is it's very strange. There's 120 buttons on this. It's like a 120 piece puzzle, and they're all exactly the same shape piece. You, and yet, if you get one wrong, you got one wrong. So you have to put the puzzle together anyway. And we find some way to do it. There's one key on here that has a raised pattern. It's sort of like Braille, and if I put my finger on this key, I'm playing a, a note that at least tells me I ha I'm playing a C, like middle C. So that's the same as... And then as I move around, I just go farther and farther away from C. This particular piece requires uh, the key of D minor, I believe. So I go from C to the closest cousin of, of C, which is G. It has one sharp, just by moving next door. And then I move next door to the next little button. I don't know if you can all see. And I get to D. Then I have a choice of playing D major. We're not doing a waltz tonight, but that's D major. D minor. I skip a button from the basic button, and I get D minor. That's the only lecture you'll ever hear on the accordion, so <laughs> listen up. So that, here's uh, Sammy's Freyla, and we have a little couple of notes intro. Do you want to do the slow? We're going to do a slow intro into this. You've all heard these intros. 
it's called a doina, and it sort of just wakes up, you know, the instruments. It, this is something you could play, you know, the first song in a set or something like that. So we'll start with the slow part and then immediately go into the gallop, okay. Again, with our classical training, sometimes we think about what a song like this would be. If you just look at the notes and just play the notes, I wanted to give you one uh, example of that. So if we, actually, Dennis, you could have a choice. Do you want to play the theme from the Wedding Hora or from Sammy's Freyla? And just, it's as if we're, we have a conductor and we're playing it in four beats, like somebody's conducting you and you're playing it in classical style rather than bending the notes. What would be a good tune for that? Pardon? Without any, without any ornamentation or without any... Yeah, let's all... Yeah, do you want us to join you on... Yeah, give us the opening melody by yourself as if you're playing at a clarinet lesson or an orchestra, classical orchestra. acceptable, classical sounding, it's fine. Our whole band could actually play like that. Uh, compared to the klezmer, it's a tiny bit robotic. Now play it again where you really bend it and give it that klezmer flavor to it. Wow. 
You know, you cannot write that music down. You cannot write that down. There's no way to notate it. Take it from me. I've been reading classical music all my life. So this is kind of off the books. And uh, there's a, a Yiddish word, they call it dreidlach, where it, it means a spinning top. And all the notes are like a spinning top. And that's about the best way to describe it. This is uh, such a pleasure to be able to bring my band to class and talk about this music. So thank you all for coming. <laughs>